Hey, fever is the topic of today's video. Hi YouTube, I'm Jack, a surgical trainee in the UK and a hay fever sufferer. Hay fever season is finally here and nature is reminding us who's really in charge. If you suffer from hay fever like me and one in four of the UK population, then this video is the one for you. I'll be talking about what hay fever is, what tests can be done for it, and also go on to the treatments for hay fever. In the description, I've put some useful links to other websites. Disclaimer, this video is not medical advice, it's purely for information. This video is also not sponsored, so I'm giving you my honest opinion. Hay fever, also known as seasonal allergic rhinitis, is a type of allergy to pollen. Pollen is the stuff that plants spray into the air to try and reproduce. At certain times of year, pollen counts are higher, and if you have hay fever, this causes certain symptoms, such as a runny or blotched nose, itching, sneezing, or other symptoms involving the eyes, such as itchy, red, watery eyes, or an irritated, itchy throat. Pollen counts are higher at certain times of the year, and that's why it's called seasonal allergic rhinitis. You may also have heard of people being either a tree or grass pollen allergy sufferer. So which type are you? grass type or tree type. In the UK, 95% of hay fever sufferers are grass type, uh, where they're allergic to grass pollen, and 20% are tree pollen allergic. Uh, so there is some crossover there as well. On a lesser note, some people are allergic to weed pollen, although this is a lot less common than the other two. One way to tell if you're either a grass pollen or a tree pollen hay fever sufferer is by the time of the year. The Met Office has released a beautiful diagram that illustrates this very well. In mid-spring to early summer, tree pollen levels tend to be higher, uh, whereas grass pollen levels are higher a bit later in the year, from late spring to mid-summer or so, and weed pollen tends to be a little bit later than that. You don't always need to do a test to find out if you have hay fever. Sometimes just going by having symptoms when the pollen counts are high is enough or sometimes uh, your doctor will try you on antihistamines, which are a type of treatment I'll mention later. Uh, and if that clears up your symptoms, then you have an allergic problem. Although it may not be hay fever, it may also be another kind of allergy, such as to dust or animals. If, however, you did decide to go for a test or your doctor thought it appropriate, there are several options. One option is to have a skin prick test, which is where a sample of pollen or whichever allergen, which is whatever causes an allergy, is placed on your skin and a prick is made to see if you develop a skin reaction. Another type of test is a blood test to look for something called IgE or immunoglobulin E. This is something that is in higher levels in the blood if somebody suffers from allergies. The treatments for hay fever can be divided into either preventative measures or medicines. Preventative measures are often underestimated despite being either free or cheap ways of helping to manage hay fever. In summary, they involve avoiding wooded or grassy areas when the pollen counts are high, closing windows, especially at high pollen times of the day, such as mid-morning and early evening, avoiding hanging out laundry, as this can then bring pollen back into the house later, and also after going outside, having a shower, or even using uh, what's called a saline nasal rinse or a, a nasal douche like this one, Neomed. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. There are many medications for hay fever, but today we're just going to talk about over-the-counter medications that you don't need a prescription for. There are two big hitters, and these are antihistamines and steroids. No, these are not the kind that will make you jacked and win a bodybuilding competition. Whoa, bro, how'd you get so massive? Hay fever medication. There are also a couple of other over-the-counter medications for specific symptoms, which I'll talk about. Antihistamines are often recommended for mild symptoms. They're an all-purpose starter medication for hay fever. Examples include loratadine, cetirizine, acrivastine, and uh, they are effective for all symptoms of allergies, really, um, as they're taken as tablets, so they act on the whole body. This includes nose symptoms, eye symptoms, and an itchy throat. Antihistamines are good because they have very few side effects, especially the modern varieties. The older types, such as uh, chlorphenamine, used to make people quite drowsy. The modern ones can make you drowsy, but less so. If you do feel drowsy, then obviously don't drive. Steroid nose sprays are used for more severe symptoms. Examples include beclometasone, or fluticasone, or mometasone. In my experience of using them, they take a few days to work, even up to two weeks. 
However, once they do start working, they are very effective for no symptoms. Uh, and they can also help with eye symptoms, even though you're spraying them in the nose. For watery or itchy eyes, chromoglycate drops can be used. And for a blocked nose, you can always use nasal decongestants, for example, Octravine uh, or uh, any of the others, uh, such as Ephedrine. These start working within a few seconds. However, you mustn't use them for more than seven days in a row, otherwise your symptoms can paradoxically get worse again. That's something known as rhinitis medicamentosa. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this was useful. Next time I'll be going into more depth about each of the treatments and expanding on those that you need a prescription for. Tune in next time.